Çöz, çöz. Halo, halo. Halo, halo çıkmayız. Halo. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello everyone. Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome you. Um, in one of our main sessions, uh, talking about the Ben Ban story. Uh, we started by speaking about the importance of financing and the triple bottom line and the power of the three coming together, uh, the collaboration that needs to happen in the market between the government, international finance institutions, and the private sector to facilitate and accelerate investments. Um, and, and we're talking investment here in renewable energy, in green projects, and even projects with a high level of complexities that contribute to cleaner, greener, and more sustainable environments. It requires the collaboration of those three. You need to look at social, environmental, and economic when you look at any project today. And if you do it with the proper governance, you will see that it can have amazing returns. And we saw that with the ERC example. But now we will be introducing that tangible development outcomes witnessed while working on the Ben Ban project. These include avoidance of 2 million GHG tons per annum, job creation, women empowerment, strong governance framework, recognized by the World Bank. Also, it will focus on the importance of responsible green condition financing in achieving climate action, including achieving the NDCs, reducing GHG emissions, and shifting towards the 42% renewable energy mix by 2035. And Ria will highlight the importance of public-private alignment and Kala Holdings as the holding company of Taqa Arabiya will share its experience as the leader of the only 100 fully Egyptian consortium and local pioneer in renewable energy. The session will be concluded by just a film that about the project so you can get to see it alive. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ahmed Haikel, founder and chairman of Kala Holdings, a leading investment company in Africa and the Middle East. Dr. Engineer Mohammed El Khayat, CEO of the New and Renewable Energy Authority, the government entity that focuses on regulating the renewable energy market in Egypt, and the authority that shall take the credit for launching the feed and tariff program, the mechanism that led to encourage major electricity generation projects from renewable resources. I also would like to welcome Shirin Shohidi, Head of Egypt and Coverage Director, North Africa, at the British International Investment that has focused mainly on green condition financing. Let me also welcome our panelists, Ms. Pakinam Kafefi, CEO of Taqa Arabiya, the leading energy and utility provider in Egypt, an energy company that has its focus on expanding portfolio of renewable energy projects and that has reached more than 100 megawatt of renewable capacity in the last couple of years. So first, I would like you to look at a film that will just show us the dream of what Ben Ben was or was hoped to be. And let's just look at it. It's okay. I
This is the largest solar project in the world when it will be completed. This will produce about 50 megawatts. But imagine, this is 50 megawatts, it's huge. It can go from all directions. Imagine that we're going to do 2,000 megawatts. This project would not have been possible at all if there was not the reform of the energy sector in Egypt. So the World Bank worked very hard at it with the government, opened up the sector, reformed the tariff structure, and we crowded in about two billion dollars with very little to put on the government uh, debt pool. This magnitude of solar power generation make the life of the people in edge make a big difference. So this is how it all started, as a dream with a lot, many, many, many um, uh, entities that came together to make it happen and make it a reality. Let me start with Dr. Ahmed Haikel asking you, how do you see the collaboration between the main trio that we always talk about? How, how has it contributed to making this a successful project? The financing, the sustainability, the bankability. Um, can you just give us a bit about the story? Again, it's, it highlights what I was saying about ERC. It is coming together with a govern, first a government that has a vision of a project that is very well conceived, very well designed, very well structured, with a legal framework that is uh, uh, very strong, together with DFIs, the private sector, and sovereign wealth funds. In this particular case, sovereign wealth funds did not play a very significant role, but certainly without DFIs and the private sector uh, uh, couldn't have been done. Thank you. Um, Engineer Hayat, um, could you please tell us a bit about the advice you would like to give to private sector and international financing institutions in order to facilitate and accelerate renewable energy projects in Egypt in order to reach the proposed 42% energy mix with the lessons learned from a project like Bemba? Okay. First, I would like really uh, to thank you for inviting me to share in this distinguished uh, panel. Uh, regarding Ibn Ban, let me start from the last sentence already mentioned on the video. There is a sand which has been shown as a market for others. Consequently, we do believe that the market definition really is in, in, in a dynamic status. It is usually in, 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 in a change phase. And consequently, what, when we look for what has been done in Ibn Ban, the first issue is the harmony among all the stakeholders, either from the public authorities and also the private sector, the financing institutions, and all stakeholders already shared in this success story. The switch from became uh, to, to, to be, uh, instead of becoming uh, 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 competitors, to become partners. And this is really one of the main issues uh, behind the success. Uh, by the way, I still remember the visit from His Excellency uh, David Malbus 
from uh, the sea. Yes, exactly. It was the first visit for him uh, abroad uh, USA. Directly, yes, uh, from Washington DC to Bimban and visited, by the way, uh, uh, Taka projects. And it was yani, uh, fascinating moments really to, to see what has been done on the map. Also, the, the, the understanding for the risks. When we look for Bimban, we, we will remember that it has been done through two phases, phase one and phase two, with two different tariffs, with two different conditions. And at the end of the day, there were a full understanding, full estimate for the risks from the stakeholders. Consequently, they became able to react to the market dynamics and consequently have or have their uh, success stories from their uh, projects. And this is really what we do rely in, 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 in future, what we do rely to have in, 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 in the coming uh, uh, few years regarding uh, more and more share of renewable energy. Thank you very much. Shirin, um, thank you for joining us today. Ms. Shohdi. Well, BEI being the UK government primary um, delivery vehicle for climate finance across Africa and other emerging economies. Um, now, how do you really see the role of DFIs and other private investors in developing innovative solutions that address key climate challenges, particularly within the context of the constantly changing macro environment? How do you perceive Egypt as an investment destination for projects like Bimban of that scale or other scales? First of all, thank you very much for having me. I think it's a it's a great pleasure, and uh, especially when the word bim bang comes up, um, I think personally I have a very personal passion for this particular project. I've been involved in it in different capacities throughout the years, and it always brings me great joy to to be part of it and go back and visit. Um, but I think it, going back to your question for us as as BII, so we are the impact investing arm for the UK government. And bringing climate and development together are in the core of our strategy, as in the core of all our investment decisions. Um, I think over the years, the way we've tried to actually deliver on climate has been more to focus not just on the volume, but also to focus on the quality of what we're actually being able to provide into the market. So since 2017, actually, we've deployed around $1.7 billion dollars. And over the past six years, we've accelerated our climate investments from just under $40 million to today more than $400 million. And I think their need is still growing for projects similar to the size of Bim Ban, but that's one side of the story. But you also have the other end of the story where you're looking at smaller investments addressing adaptation and resilience, which is one of the key issues around climate and trying to think of innovative solutions. And I think as DFIs, it's very important to recognize that the challenges of climate are not always easy addressable projects. You are not, we're not going to always find the bankable projects. We're not going to always find the off-the-shelf uh, financing solutions or even investment answers to how we can fund these projects. And as DFIs, we constantly try to think of innovative ways to be able to engage, to be able to provide even concessional financing, to find grants that we're able to tap into and different sorts of climate or green capital to deploy and be able to encourage more and more innovation. So I think the scale is large. So similar to Bimban, that's large scale and it's massive. I mean, the impact is huge, not just from climate, but also from an economic and a social perspective. But we also try to focus even on the other flip side of the spectrum on the smaller size scale and really trying to look at adaptation and resilience as one of the key focus areas for us. Thank you, Ms. Johzi. Now, to Ms. Pakenham Kafefi, could you please take us through the success story being the first fully Egyptian company and the only one to finalize the 65 megawatt project with Ben Ban, one of the biggest solar parks in the world with all the financing, amazing financing story behind it? Um, as Shireen said, uh, yani Ben Ban for us was our pride and joy and it will be still the same feeling because it was not the door opener and uh, the real milestone to, to, to the trio, government and private sector and DFIs in Egypt, but it's also for us. 
especially that it was our first project. So it was between that we wanted to uh, prove ourselves that we are capable as our first project of renewable. Taka has been studying uh, green and uh, because of uh, awareness of climate change since 2014. And when the government initiated the feed-in tariff, it was a great opportunity for us. The first challenge that we wanted to do it alone, and it was very hard to convince uh, DFIs and uh, Dr. Hayat and the team that we are capable. The reason uh, both of them approve uh, uh, and were so excited to do it alone, and we are the only Egyptian companies with no multinational experience and first project, is that we've been working with the ministry for ages, developing and big distribution and generating companies. And the DFIs believed in our uh, milestones and how we are tackling this project in an efficient way. We did it step by step. So step number one, we took these approvals and we said we're going to prove ourselves. Step number two, we managed to get uh, a real uh, co uh, consultants, uh, EPC, all, all the, the, the top notch to have our learning, get our team to learn to be a, because we were looking for the future. The third step we managed and we were the w w few ones to manage to make, uh, although we took approval of $75 million to our project, we finished it by $72 million, which mean, means that we managed it in a, the best efficient way. And we were the first one in round two. And I think uh, Dr. Hayatu, he was man mentioning uh, David Malpas, he was in our land opening our project. Now we are one of the top three from IFC for environmental and safety. And we believe this project made us not only us and Egypt and all the private sector to open the trio for more successful. And we can see now on, on ground hydrogen project, wind project that have the, the combination of the trio that inshallah will be as successful and more successful than Bimbe. Can we play the film, please? I'd love us to look at the project today. Now it's finished, the 65 megawatt. It's okay, they can, they won't be shooting that. Thank you. So, amazing project, amazing achievement. Um, Dr. Ahmed, after Ben Ban success story and the many other ones that we, you have currently in your portfolio, what's, what, what is in planning? What's the roadmap? How do you plan on replicating the success story, whether locally or regionally? What are you thinking about? Uh, uh, the, the, Taka is uh, doing a number of projects that are private to private private uh, sector consumer with private sector uh, 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 development being TACA. That we have done in Dina Farms, that we have done, we're doing right now in uh, uh, Minya, in the ASCOM uh, Calcium Carbonate Project. So uh, uh, the private to private model is a profitable model provide, but it needs much more work because you need to make sure that the client is a bankable client. In, in, in the uh, model from private to government, 
you do not have to worry about the client because the client is a government. Uh, but in, in, the, in the, the private to private model, you need to worry about the bankability of your clients. So it requires it, you're taking more risk and you are taking, uh, 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 you are doing a lot more analysis on the client. So it's a different beast that we are doing at this point in time. We're continuing also to uh, uh, do um, uh, solar power selling to governments, uh, not only the Egyptian government, but, but other governments in the region. And we, we have a new projects that we are engaging in at this point in time, which is uh, uh, an industrial park powered by uh, mostly green energy, off-grid green uh, 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 energy. Uh, that project is in the early days at this point in time. I met uh, uh, His Excellency the Prime Minister uh, uh, last Thursday, and that was one of the uh, key projects that we talked about. Uh, it's in the early phases, but... I think uh, it has a, a good potential of being able to sell electricity to industrial projects at a good price. Uh, so that's where we're going with our projects. Thank you. Um, Dr. Khayat, I mean, everyone is speaking about how Egypt's efforts are to, to become an energy hub for the region and um, the size and the potential and the amazing opportunity that exists. I'd like you to tell us a little bit more about your vision and how we see that transpiring. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, uh, as I just mentioned a few minutes ago that the market dynamics as, uh, are too high and from one side this could be a positive issue but from the other side it, it will be challenging Absolutely. because it needs uh, from bit reactions and respond and how could we react in a positive way for this. When we look currently for the market, we can see different or some key messages that we do believe. The first issue is based on the challenges of the gas supply and uh, which affects the, uh, uh, the global market of the energy and starting looking for new products. And this product could be the green hydrogen, which could be one of the solutions for the future to secure the energy supply and uh, its derivatives as green ammonia, emethanol. Uh, this is one of the key uh, messages. The second one is in terms of the global political will. And uh, now we are in, in a COP, 27 there is a full commitment to the environment from one side and more passion to invest in renewable energy consequently there is a, a global political well which will support and paving the way in front of more and more uh, renewable energy projects in the future the third message i do believe is in terms of capacity per projects uh, a few years ago it was normal speak about mega projects hundreds of mega projects something like this now it sounds easy to listen about giga projects and from one side yes exactly and from one side it, it confirms that we need a lot of issues to be considered great stability the storage of the uh, uh, of such products and also the interconnection uh, among the neighboring countries and how could we secure more and more reliable renewable energy sources and to be in the texture of the energy uh, uh, network in, in all countries. The fourth message that I do believe is usually markets uh, looking for pioneers okay. and leaders who believe that we can do something and they prove that there is usually a doable mechanism. Ten years ago, no one 
could believe that such investments in photovoltaic could be done. True, absolutely true. Now, it is the most cheapest source of Future, I am sure that it will witness different technologies, different mechanisms for the projects. The market paradigm itself will totally change. And instead of having such as now projects to just to bump the network or to feed the network with the clean energy, we will see captive projects. We just few speaking about such mechanism. It will be a renewable energy projects to be coupled with water desalination, green ammonia, green hydrogen, e-methanol, uh, 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 electrical vehicles, different applications uh, could be done. Consequently, we do believe that, inshallah, in the future, we will have more and more renewable energy. Uh, and this, for sure, will be based on more harmony um, among all the uh, stakeholders and the players in the market. Thank you. Thank you so much. So impressive. Um, and Ms. Shohidi, so explain to us in a little bit more detail, how does green conditioned financing help in transitioning Egypt um, and Africa towards a green economy? What will BII appetite be in regarding investing in future public-private partnerships of this sort? Uh, thank you, Reda, for the question. I think it's very important. So, I mean, as BII, we've been investing in across Africa for the, more than 70 years. So our presence in Africa is quite solid. And I think as most of us also realize, I think the Africa in general as a continent is one of the continents that are significantly being impacted by climate change, given obviously how, how challenging the environment is to operate and looking at different issues and challenges just for the past two years. So whether it's COVID, whether it's food security nowadays, whether it's looking at inflationary pressures and even the wider kind of climate impact. So there's a lot of need for even more innovation to come in. There is more need for very focused and quality climate related investments in these markets. It requires a lot of innovation and quite a risk appetite to, to actually take on. As you've mentioned earlier, the macroeconomic conditions are constantly changing and that's not going to change, right? It's the only constant we have around us is change. And we need to find a way to continue to be able to adapt to these changes, but also have the willingness to take on that risk appetite to be able to address these issues in these markets. And I think for us as BII, I mean, Africa has always been at the heart of what we do. It's been a continent we've been investing in it over the past 70 years, as I mentioned. And Egypt as well is one of our powerhouse countries. It's a country where we're focusing, where we think there's a lot of appetite and opportunity to continue to invest. We've been growing our portfolio for quite significantly over the past few years. Today, with commitments over $750 million across various sectors. And climate still remains to be at the core and heart of what we do. So I think the potential is there. The opportunities are there. I think we just need to bring more of these success stories similar to Bimban of how we can collaborate as TFIs, private investors, private sector operators and developers, and even the government in order to find ways and solutions to be able to come up with new ideas of how to bring these opportunities to reality. Thank you. Absolutely true. Um, so now with Egypt's uh, targets and vision towards 42% renewables energy mix by 2035 uh, that pushed globally, as we're hearing, towards cleaner, greener uh, uh, energy solutions. Could you tell us a bit about what Taqa Arabe is doing, what do you have in, uh, in planning? Before I, I talk about the strategy of Taqa, I want to say why we did this strategy. I think Egypt have all the pillars. So we have the natural resources, uh, from wind to, to sun uh, to uh, plenty of land. We have a government that have uh, a straight vision and knows what they want, uh, 2035, 2050. We have a good uh, platform of regulation. Uh, and all these criteria, plus a DFI who's interested to invest in Egypt, make uh, Taka eager to invest and uh, Taka to grow. Our strategy is working simultaneously into two areas. One, the Giga, as Dr. Hayat, we are going to apply in the hydrogen and the wind and we work in the Giga project. But also, 
our bread and butter and what we believe that at the end five six years from now when liberalization happened it has to be private to private and government had would be the guidance the monitoring the regulator and the private has to uh, put everything on their shoulder in order to do that we have to start picking the private to private even if it cannot be in giga projects we can start it in mega projects and this is what we are doing after Bimban, we worked with agriculture with industrial with uh, with resorts yes it's a medium size five years six years ten years but this is the beginning after that, when the liberalization comes, we can have a land, we can make the network, we can uh, make a, a, a piece of land directly to a client with a 50 mega, and we can make the banking, full banking, full wheeling. All this will come up within the next year in a full vision, and the, the variables will be diminished, and we will be able to move forward. So again, talk us have a lot of opportunities. We are lucky that we are in Egypt as an Egyptian company. We are going to grow in the in the big level and in the small level amazing thank you thank you i want to thank my panelists uh for a very very interesting uh discussion would you like to have any final word does anybody want to add anything Paki will always out of time i will i will say that uh, not only taka is aware of the climate me as an executive uh, in energy and a mother of two young in uh, generation i think we our the first generation who felt it real we felt the weather changes we felt we saw things we, we have a responsibility to change the climate and we have to do it for the next generation absolutely um, we trust uh, private sector private sector is our partner thank you very much dr ahmed any, any final word I mean, there's no question. We have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make a difference for the next generations. It's on us, and we're making it happen together. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you today. I'd like to have a group photo, please.